Hey there, Postal here. Wow, I haven't seen this map in forever. Um, like, oh my gosh, just forever, forever. So what are we in? We are in the I-153P DM4. We're just going to call it the I-153P. This is the Tier 4 um, premium or special plane that you can win for Wargaming's birthday. So let's go celebrate their birthday by taking it out for a flight. What is this plane? Well, it's a pretty fast Tier 4 plane, especially for a biplane. Uh, what, I'm going, going to be going about 250 miles an hour for most of this battle, I think. We'll see. Um, but there is an I-153 available in the game in crates and things of that nature. But what's the difference between that plane and this plane, besides this plane being a special birthday gift type plane? The biggest difference is this one actually has much bigger cannons. This one has two 20 millimeter cannons, um, which, if you know, 20 millimeter cannons at tier four is actually a big deal. Um, you don't usually get 20 millimeter cannons this low down in the tiers because um, they're pretty hard hitting for tier four. What Wargaming th does, though, to balance that out is they overheat really, really quickly. And so you definitely need to be mindful of what you're doing, um, how you're attacking, what kind of situation you're in. Um, it actually really reminds me quite a lot of taking out the I-210. And although I've learned to appreciate said pain, I would never say that the I-210 is a favorite of mine. And I'm going to go along the same kind of thought process with this plane. I don't think it's uh, my favorite, but the more I've played it, the more I've learned to appreciate it. So let's go up and over here. This PV-3 can almost certainly have one over me. Uh. Did I not kill him? Come on, what's he on one hit? He's literally on one hit point. That is pretty funny. Um, let's see what we can do here. Not a lot, to be honest. Getting a rear gunner of somebody's. Try it. This is, again, you don't want to overheat these cannons. Too late. Already overheated them. Um, let's dive down. Turn over. Tap the tap, and we're still gonna overheat them. Really key to get these guns to be hitting. Ah, I would almost certainly rather have just machine guns that I could hold down right now, but you're not always stuck in these kind of situations, right? In a one on one engagement, this plane is definitely um, a great plane to have. When you're stuck in the middle of like a million different things going on, um, I'd rather have cannons or machine guns that don't overheat, right? We. Alright, full cool story, bro. I get it. I get it. You got me. Congratulations, all seven of you. Um, so let's, so since they've got literally everybody there, let's go ahead and let's spawn down south. And we're going to take these other sectors. They can own that center sector, unfortunately. I don't, I've never seen this many people down in the low tiers, but hey, maybe we're all hanging out here having fun. Um, bombers, I can't do much versus bombers. You are in a Soviet fighter. I don't know why it's taking seven minutes to reload, but whatever. Um, you are in a Soviet fighter, so goodness knows you cannot get any kind of altitude performance, right? So yeah, the big difference between the I-153, not that a lot of people have that plane either, but the big difference between it and the I-153P is just the guns. It's the only difference, actually. And so that means in a one-on-one -on -one engagement, this plane I'm in is probably the superior plane. In the middle of a dogfight type situation, you just need your guns always going. Yeah, 30 cal machine guns are going to be the better, better 
type plane. So it just kind of matters what interaction you're stuck in. I'm not going that high, dude. Let's go get this sector, and let's have the rest of our team get that sector. Unfortunately, that PV3 is like the most turny thing in the world. But holy freaking crap, these people. So, even though it's tier 3, I'm going to have to deal with it. And doubly unfortunate, I'm now out of engine power. So I'm going to be dead, yep. Thoroughly annoying, man. Those uh, heavy fighters really tore me up there. Just didn't see them coming inbound at all. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to spawn over here, kill the fighters that are over here, and determine what we do from there. I still have my pneumatic control assist. Why does it take so long to respawn in? I don't know. We're down on... Um, down on capture points here, so let's just see what we can do here to try to turn this around. Got him knocked out. So if we can't get him knocked out, we can. Got him knocked out, we didn't even have to ram him. How nice is that? See, now we can take our time and kill this guy, hopefully. Heavier target. Man, these 20 millimeter cannons are just overheating like it's nobody's business. Hurricane 1. Barely maneuverable. Tier 4. Multi-roll, but I'm in a tier 4 fighter. Biplane at that, I can definitely have maneuver him. Alright, get this guy knocked out, hopefully. Do you copy? Go. They've almost got us. Got this hawk. She can definitely outmaneuver a hawk. The I-153 and the PV-3 are going to be our biggest um, turn fight type situations that we're going to have to deal with. So we're definitely going to be mindful of that. Alright, ground attacker. Let's go ahead and go for said ground attacker. Um, let's go ahead and let's fire our fireworks off here. Excelente. Keep on moving. Uh, let's head back to the center, I guess. Again, this PV-3 is really the... Th oh! Shit, it's Navy! <laughs> the PV-3 is like the serious pain in the butt. It's the plane I'm fearful of, to be honest. Just because I know it can outmaneuver me. Um, I suspect I'll be able to outspeed him, though. But um, it's not always the point, is it? Let's keep on moving over here. Got my pneumatic control assist available as needed. Got my fireworks going. Got the Koza dub as well. Are we going to get the win though? That's the real question. Can we get? I don't think I can get the altitude that I need to get that bomber that's up there. So, what we need to do is ABC, right? We're losing on points, but if we can cap this sector back pretty quickly. Whoa, freaking uh, lag horrific there. Okay, uh, okay, 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 okay. I don't wanna die now. Like of all the times to die, this would not be the best time. Come on, 
Freaking guns, don't overheat on me now. Thank you. Um, okay, so now we've won the game. Whew! That deserves some fireworks. Nice. <laughs> um, oh my goodness. How did we pull that off? Honestly, like... Oh, well, we had an I-17 doing some real, some real work, too. So let's not take full good God... Um, a, you know, responsibility for that win. There was some teamwork there. Tier 4, though, you get an ace. I mean, what I mean by that is Tier 3, I don't think you get an ace. Anyway, let's head on back. Alright, so definitely by far the best game I've had in the I-153P. I mean, I've only played it maybe a half dozen times, and, and it might only be four or five times. But we'll just say I've played it half a dozen times, right? Um... Actually, I think I've played it four times. Anyway, that's not my point. My point is, the more I play it, the more I get used to the, the, just the mechanics of it, which I suppose is true of every plane that you'll play. When I first played it a couple times, I wasn't overly fond of it. The 20 millimeter cannons, even knowing that they were gonna overheat quickly, they still overheated too quickly. When you desperately need them, they were failing me. And, um, you know, that's frustrating, right? But this particular battle, I was really conscious of what I was doing, and I think it clicked with me after I died that first time. Um, this plane is going to be better in one-on-one -on -one engagements, uh, whereas a plane who's mach who has machine guns is going to be okay being stuck in the middle of a dogfight constantly. This plane just doesn't have that flexibility with the guns overheating. So if you determine the engagement a little bit more, if you determine the ability to... Um, determine you know exactly what you're up against you're gonna you're gonna do better in this plane um, and yeah on top of that I didn't even mention it in this battle but look at this paint scheme this is a really freaking cool paint scheme I gotta say I really like the paint scheme um, I think there's a different uh, emblem you can use I'm using the 23 emblem because why not and yeah go from there right I've also got um, you know <laughs> I'm gonna change this, please. I've also got, um, you know, some equipment at tier four lying around. So I've gone ahead and set it up what I feel is the most optimal. And that is getting an uprated engine, getting uh, the lightweight wing, lightweight wing frame, um, cause this improves the airspeed without taking away from the maneuverability. And then I've also got the optical sight on here, helping with just the accuracy that you're definitely gonna want with just two 20 millimeter cannons. On top of that, because you've got, this is a premium plane, you can put any pilot in it you want. I've put my Yak-19 pilot in it, who has Marksman 2, who has a uh, firefighter, although this plane didn't catch on fire. Um, I'm not sure if caught it on fire any games I've played, but still, just in case. And then has Aerodynamics Expert, which is going to increase both of these items right here. Once I specialize the plane, I would recommend easily putting on um, engine cooling so you get that extra 10 seconds worth of boost. Otherwise, the setup that I've got here, you don't need universal ammo. It's helpful, but yeah, it costs extra credits. You might not necessarily want it. Pneumatic control assist is definitely a need. At tier four, there's a lot of really turny fighters. This plane is pretty turny, but it's not like, you know, A6M1 turny. Um, it's not key 43 turny. Um, and so, you know, having pneumatic control assist might save you in those one in one one on one engagements. Otherwise, first aid dressing package is definitely the way to go here. Again, the plane doesn't catch on fire all that often. And again, you want your accuracy if your pilot gets knocked out. Unless, of course, you want to go with fireworks because happy birthday, Wargaming. So, yeah, this, uh, this plane, two 20 millimeter cannons, relatively short range. Um, you know, 1900 feet. What is that going to be about? 300 meters, I suppose, if I, if I cross that over. You've got your your air-cooled engine plus your ramjets on the wings for whatever reason the Soviet decided, the Soviets decided to do that. I don't know. But it's a cool plane, and you can get it for free. I'm always one to get free of planes. Um, it's not an easy plane to play, but it can be a good plane to play. It just takes some getting used to, that's for darn sure. All right, so enough about the plane. What do you actually need to do to win it? Well, um, it's the happy birthday mission. So part one of the missions, um, you get top three in personal points. 
five times and um, you get 10 fireworks. You get top three by personal points 10 times, you get this cool 23 emblem. And you get top three by personal points 23 times and you're gonna win this plane. And what's awesome about this is it's all concurrent. So it's not like you have to complete part one and get the fireworks and then you get then you have to start on the emblem and then you have to start on the plane. No, as you're getting the top three for part one, you're also getting it for part two and part three at the same time. What's actually really cool, um, and maybe more, uh, not even may, what is definitely more worth more than the plane itself is the fact that you get two upgraded implementations um, for one hour and two for two hours. So that's where you can get, uh, it's a, um, using your boosters. So you're gonna get two of these for one hour and two of them for two hours. It's 100% aircraft experience. You can get two of the credit boosters, 100% for an hour and two 100% for two hours. You get two intensive trainings, which is 300% to crew XP for one hour and two for two hours. And then last but not least, you get two 300% uh, boosters for free XP, two for one hour and two for two hours. So that's, that's a lot, right? Like 16 boosters. Boosters are always nice. Um, boosters kind of make it so you don't need premium time for a little while. It's very nice. If you've got premium time, boosters are even better because it's on top of that, right? So again, the boosters might be the best part about it. You only get the boosters though once you win the plane. Um, yeah, so take advantage. It's 23 top three personal points. You don't need to win. It doesn't matter chevrons, so you could be top three because you've got a couple chevrons, but you only did like 4,000 personal points. You, it's, pop, it's top three based on personal points, so keep that in mind. It might not necessarily be top three um, if, you're, if you're top three based on chevrons, so don't want to get confused on that. Anyway, worth the grind, if not for this plane, definitely for the boosters. Um, yeah. That's all I gotta say about it. I have had fun flying this plane. I like the regular I-153 uh, as well, but um, this one's definitely worth the free grind, especially if you've got time this weekend. I think this is going on until um, early morning on the 4th, so basically two days from now or so, and you're gonna wanna go ahead and continue the grind. Hope you enjoyed this particular video. Um, and keep on grinding if you haven't gotten it. If you've gotten the i513P, do you agree with my assessment or is there a different tact that you have with this plane? Something that you're able to uh, get some more oomph out of the plane with. I'd love to hear your, your opinion on this plane and on the grind itself. And otherwise, I hope you have a great day. Bye.